it's not a deadbeat topic if I'm not involved. What do you mean? I've got two of those. I'm an expert now, so. <laughs> channel and thank you so much for being here so a few days ago this lady did this what she thought was a heartwarming post um where basically she talks about how her deadbeat baby daddy left her and her daughter when she was about two weeks old or something and apparently it's been in and out or something like that but now she's doing this whole post about how she's proud that she he is back and um She's basically praising him for doing what he's supposed to do and and he's also now i think they are now enjoying the social media attention because he's now he recently just posted something about the world is talking about them and their daughter um but you know he's a like one of the hashtags he used in his post is dead beat dad, dad girl but um so basically that sparked a lot of conversation on twitter about dead beats and um it's not a deadbeat topic if i'm not involved what do you mean i've got two of those i'm an expert now so <laughs> hi i'm gonna talk about it just to backtrack quickly if you haven't seen any of my videos i'm just gonna summarize my life story quickly i've got two kids by two um different deadbeats one um the first one i met in school we dated and then i felt pregnant and then he disappeared he like had, literally had nothing to do with me it's been 13 years nothing to do with the child also his family has been involved in and out also but um i don't really put much attention to them because that's the, that's not their responsibility as it is as much as it is his so he hasn't been part of my child's life for 13 years 12 years later, I meet someone else. We get into something. I fall pregnant, very happy about the pregnancy. And um, then he changes his mind. Then he's like, then the inconsistency starts. Um, our child is now 19 months, almost two. And um, for the first year of her life, he was very inconsistent. And then earlier this year, I decided to take him to maintenance court because in his inconsistency, it was his presence, his presence, his presence was inconsistent. Um, financially, he wasn't there physically, he wasn't there at all. But his presence was inconsistent. And in the beginning, I made it very clear to him that presence is more important to me than money because I've seen what non-present has done to my eldest daughter. So I wanted this situation to be different. And then he, it's, he seemed like he heard me, but he didn't clearly. And earlier this year, I took him to maintenance court because of the inconsistency and if you can't be present at least be present financially do something you know after i took him to court for maintenance he then took me to court and filed a restraining order against me that is valid for five years so for the next five years legally he cannot see his child so that's my story with my two dead beats the reason why i was this touched about this girl's post i try my best to not judge people I mean, we're human, we will judge each other, but I try my best not to judge people, especially mothers, like parents. Parenting is hard. You do what you think is best at the time. Maybe years later you realize that I shouldn't have done it this way, but like parenting is just like a never learning, a never ending learning um, journey. So I do try to always try and understand what the parent is going through and I try not to judge, but this time I'm judging. I'm judging this girl. I am judging her so much because I don't know. I, I do know why I'm judging her. It's because I know exactly what the child in her child is going through. And it sucks that both her parents are putting her through what she's putting, what she's basically going through. My, I'm going to talk about my first baby daddy because our daughter is um, 13 now. So she, she it's been some time he has never been in the picture ever me and him the last time we spoke was the day i told him i was pregnant and then a few months down the line um his family called me and then we had a whole big issue type of thing but me and him never spoke his mom came to durban when i was giving birth and his mom was very much part of um, my daughter's life and she still is 
so she's been um she's been a vital part of my daughter's life but he has never i don't even think he's ever met her because there were times when she was younger she would visit him and his family home in Pretoria, and i think he would make sure he wasn't around um so i don't think he has met her in i think october november 2020 last year uh, my daughter got into contact with him so before i even get there for the past two years she's been starting to ask about him she's never really cared to ask about him and i think it's because my father has been in the picture so she's had a father figure role her entire life and recently i guess you know she's wanted she started being curious about him and she started asking about him at first i'll just go around the bush and i wouldn't really tell her the truth we beat around the bush for some time up until in october last year where she went to her grandmother her paternal grandmother and asked for his number she gave him and then she started talking to him and then a month later i found out that they were talking so i asked her um what are they talking about and stuff and then she's just like no she's been asking to meet him and he keeps saying they will they will they will but he never really comes through and the one time that they were supposed to actually set a date he said he had COVID. personally i don't believe he had COVID. i think he just lied um and i remember my daughter every day at the house she would wake up and count like day 12 day 10 you know she'd like do a countdown until one time i asked her like what is this countdown about and she said that it's like basically 10 days until i meet my dad because He's got COVID, so he's currently um, quarantining for 14 days. So it's now we're on day 10. And that's when I had to actually sit her down and tell her that, listen, I don't think that this meeting is going to happen. And basically just tell her the real truth about what has been happening for the past 12 years at the time. You know, what happened between me and him and stuff. And she broke down. You know, she really, really broke down. And it was very hard for us to deal with that. But we dealt with it and life continued. And then a month later, I think he's the one who actually reached out to her. What for? I don't know. And um, he then, they started talking. And then one time my daughter said to me that, oh, her dad said that the reason why he can't meet with her is because he's still busy being a father to his two boys. And he doesn't know how to be a father to her because she's a girl. How do you say that to a child? How does that make sense to you as an adult? I can't, I can't parent a girl because I, I'm busy parenting my two boys. Children are children. What do you mean you can't parent your girl? And, oh my gosh, that day, I, I, if you've seen my previous videos, you will know. I'm too good that day. I had never spoken to this man in, what, what, 12, 13 years. But that day, I was just like, you're going to know me. How dare you come into my child's life and tell her shit like that? You know, and after then, after that, I noticed that my daughter started internalizing his absence and making it about her. And I understand why she would do that because you are a father to your two other children, but you're not a father to this one. Of course, she's going to take it personally. It's not that you don't know how to be a father. You don't know how to be a father to me. So how do I not take that personally? So that um i then then spoke to him i don't really didn't speak to him i just sent him a very strong worded message telling him where to get off and never to ever contact my daughter ever again i got a lot of backlash from the people who are close to me for cutting him off like i even went as far as going on her phone and blocking him and deleting his, his number because every time they speak her spirit comes down every time they speak she has panic attacks and she has mental breakdowns and i'm not about to deal with that not caused by a deadbeat anyway so i was just the thing for me what i thought was right at the time and i still believe stand by my decision i cut him off for her and to show that obviously he didn't have an issue with it he hasn't fought anything he he has access to my phone he's not blocked on my phone so if he ever really wanted to be part of the child's life he can always come through me so clearly he doesn't want to but I had to make that decision because I saw what the inconsistency was doing to my child. My child had been fine for 12 years, or maybe I thought she was fine, but she hadn't really had the issues that she has now. They hadn't come up for the past 12 years. They only started coming up when she started communicating with him. And the communication thing, which was the inconsistency that made her, that got her to a point where we are almost at a point at no return now when it comes to my daughter, my daughter's mental health. 
affected by one person. One person who's had nothing to do with her for 12 years. In two months, he destroyed what my family and I have built in 12 years. He came and he destroyed everything. The confidence that my child had, he came in two months and he destroyed it. And that's how much power dead beats have. And that's what you guys don't understand. And then you then, then call people bitter baby mamas, keeping the children away from inconsistent fathers. And that's why what this woman is doing is getting to me so much because you don't understand how much that is going to hurt the child. Anyone who's had the choice, this man wasn't locked up. This man wasn't dead. This man has had the choice to be in his daughter's life. And he chose to not to. He chose to come in and out. And now he's decided to come in for the umpteen time and she's clapping for him. I hate how black women, I'm gonna say black women because I'm a black woman. I don't, I've never been any other woman except for a black woman. But I hate how black women are so conditioned to protecting black men, even at the expense of, of our own children. Because literally what this woman is doing, she's protecting him and sanitizing his image at the expense of her own daughter. She does not understand what this inconsistency is going to do to her daughter in, her, in the long term. Obviously, there's a lot of outrage about this woman and what she's doing. Um, and most women, obviously, women are sensible. It's the women who are saying that you're going to hurt the child. And the men are like, no, girls need their fathers. Girls need their fathers. Girls need people who are there for them. Girls need people who want to be there for them. Girls don't need inconsistent men. No, nobody needs an inconsistent father. I would rather you be an absent father than be an inconsistent father. Actually, I would rather you be dead. I, I mean, I would re much rather my baby daddies were dead. I know it's probably evil for me to say it, but it's actually much easier to explain to your child that your father died than to explain to your child that your father is living with his other children, but he just doesn't want to be part of your life. Do you know how difficult it is to have that talk with your child? Do you know how difficult it is to tell your child that this person does not want to be part of your part of your life, but at the same time also try and build your child up by saying, well, you know what, this has got nothing to do with you. Because no matter how many times I tell my daughter that this, this has got nothing to do with you, she will personalize it. She will take it personally and she will internalize it. For the rest of her life, my daughter's going to have abandonment issues. For the rest of her life, my daughter's going to have mental health issues. For the rest of her life, my daughter's going to have trust issues because this man who says, yes, we can meet one day and then the next day, all of a sudden he has COVID. God, I wish he actually had COVID. I actually wish, I hope he actually did have COVID and go through pain, Jay. So that's my thing when it comes to, I'm so sensitive about this topic and it hurts me. It hurts me because I've seen the pain that my daughter has gone through because of an inconsistent slash absent father. Because of that, I made sure that my second child is not going to go through that. When I saw that her father in the first year of her life has, was inconsistent, I shut it down quickly. I was like, you know what? It's either you're here or you're not. And he always has an excuse. He, he'll, say, he'll say that he'll come see her and then he doesn't come see her. Yeah, she does not know and she will not remember this, but this sets a tone on how things will be in the future if I accept this kind of behavior. Right now, he's gonna say that I'm gonna come and my daughter who's barely two doesn't know better. It's fine if he doesn't come. I will know that he didn't come, but she won't. If I accept this now, he's going to do it five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. He's going to be doing it for the rest of her life. So what I'm going to do is shut it down quickly. Luckily for me, in this instant, I don't have to shut it down. He shut it down himself by applying for a restraining order against me that is valid for five years. So for the next five years, he's got no, he can't see his child. And after five years from, after the five years goes by, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if he's, in the next five years he's going to grow up and realize what he's done and i guess i don't know and let me not say i could never say never never say never um a lot can happen in the next five years i don't know but i would much rather an absent father than an inconsistent one we talk every day we talk about how abusive abusive mothers are worse than absent mothers why don't we apply the same with um inconsistent fathers because inconsistency is abuse 
it is emotional abuse and we don't get it because we are so used to it we've normalized men coming in and out of our lives and we think that when they come we need to clap for them no i'm not going to clap a fish for swimming your job is to be there with me through from the pregnancy till our child does not need us anymore which is never it's fine if you can't be there throughout the pregnancy but your job is to be there from birth till forever and then you're going to choose to come in and out whenever you feel like it and i need to clap every time you come i need to give you props every time you come back i need to make life comfortable for you every time you come back come on inconsistency is the worst type for me it's like it's, it's, it's another like level of abuse that i just will not take not for my children anyway when my children are old enough to make decisions um, for themselves for their lives then they will decide if they want these inconsistent fathers or not and chances are they won't i do not know one person an adult who said you know what i'll take my father being inconsistent no you're not going to disappear for 20 30 years and come back and think Uguti, you're going to find what you left 30 years ago no this person has grown up without you this person has lived without you this person everything they know is without you now you think they're going to accept you just because when you decided to do so shy and see a full boy and now this person now this child needs to come and accept you and i hate that that the onus is always on the child to accept these absent and deadbeat fathers the onus is on the child and the mother to make it comfortable for him to be a father again not me babe not me nah i i i do not care for deadbeats I will never clap for deadbeats. Even if my second baby daddy in the next five years decide, but you know what? This receiving order was a mistake. I want to do right. You're not going to get a round of applause from me for coming back and doing what you were supposed to do from birth. Gosh, like I could go on and on and on and on about this. But I think as mothers and as women, we need to uncondition ourselves from this thing of protecting black men we protect them so much that it actually to the detriment of our own children like we are protecting these black men at the expense of our daughters and sons and no it needs to stop you guys it needs to stop dead beats have their own place in hell and now i'll probably see them in hell too but they do not have a place in my heart. They do not have a place in my children's lives. Not if I have anything to do with it. My children will one day decide what they want, what kind of relationship they want to have with their fathers. But as long as I have anything to do with it, you will not come here and abuse my child. My daughter, my first daughter is going through the absolute most right now because of an inconsistent deadbeat ass. I now have to sit here and pick up the pieces with my family, with the help of my family. I have to literally pick up pieces every day. When I tell you guys that this man in two months broke down everything that we've worked hard for in 12 years. In two months, he came and he killed everything. So, and now I'm going to be picking up these pieces for the rest of our lives. Now my daughter and I are going to be in therapy for the rest of our lives. Oh, until she feels like she's in a space where she can handle whatever it is that she needs to handle. But a 13 year old, my daughter is 13 and she's been so da badly damaged by this inconsistency and this absent deadbeat that I have no words to explain her pain. I don't think I've ever gone through that kind of pain. So I don't even know what she's going through, but I do know that my child is in pain all because of an inconsistent deadbeat. So basically this was more for rant than anything. I most of my videos are always around anyway so <laughs> you guys are used to this but i hope that in I, I do know that we get desperate for our children to have their fathers i do know there comes a time where you just as long as they're calling that type of thing i've been there i've done it first my second baby daddy i did that i did the whole I will meet you halfway as long as you are present. I will bring the child to you as long as you are present. You don't have to pay maintenance as long as you are present. I did that. And look at where it got me. A restraining order against his own, against the own mother of this child, who's the primary giver of this child for five years. So no matter what you do, a deadbeat will always be a deadbeat and they will always show their ass. And the only person who gets hurt is the child. We need to protect our children even if it means we are protecting them from their own parents. 
that's it from me you guys i don't know if you have a deadbeat or you you were raised by a deadbeat or an inconsistent father how did it affect you now i think actually i would like to hear more from people who were raised not even i mean he didn't raise you i like to hear from people who had inconsistent deadbeat dads in their lives how does it affect you now what's your relationship with men like do you trust men do you trust your own dad and if you are a single mom raising a child with an inconsistent deadbeat how are you handling all of that what's your breaking point do you think that you're going to keep accepting the inconsistency until when what, what what needs to happen for you to be like you know what enough is enough this is it we're not doing this anymore either you shape up or fuck off where do we draw the line i don't know i draw i drew mine and my second baby daddy drew the line for me <laughs> so we could we could it's it's just me and my kids and my luckily i do have amazing men around me from my father to my male friends to other men in my life who um will always play the male role in my children's lives if they need it i mean i'm sure they need it um so i don't really stress much about that but i do know that they will always my kids will always have that void of not having a father we will deal with that in therapy it's okay you guys it's okay i'm not accept, i'm not accepting any deadbeats just to make sure that my that void is in my child is filled because it won't be filled not by him anyway anyway Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is the end of the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I really, really need you guys to please help me push my content. I need subscribers. I need to increase my watch time. As you know, I am unemployed. So I'm really, really hoping I start making money off YouTube. Hopefully by the end of the year or beginning of next year. I really hope something comes up for me in the jobs space-wise. But in, in this space, you guys can actually help. By pushing my content to people that you think might find it relatable thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time